everyone. Today we get to talk about the Shimeru characters of Genshin Impact. And so let's start with the quiet and smart scribe man of the Academia, Al Haytham. So let's begin. Alhaitam is a playable Dendro character in Genshin Impact. Alhaitam is a member of the the Herofatad of the Samir Academia and the Academia Scribe, responsible for documenting their findings and drafting ordinances. Despite his brilliance, people within the Academia are complex by Alhaitam due to his unwillingness to aspire for higher office, in spite of his egocentricity and many have been at odds with him for his uncompromising view on rationality and the truth. Alhaitam is a 5 star male character in Genshin Impact. The weapon he uses is a sword and his vision element is Dendro. His birthday is February 11th. Alhaitam's constellation is Valjavalins and he is from the region of Sumeru. He's affiliated with Shimeru Academia, Hervatat, and his special dish is Ideal Circumstance, which is the variant of Sab Meat Stew. The four voice actors of the scribe who wants to know more of the world around him in the four localizations of Genshin Impact are Nazi Tarsha in English, Yang Choren in, in Ch Chinese, sorry. Umehara Yuichiru in Japanese, and Jun Sangwa in Korean. All hate them goes by two titles. One is Amadishing Instruction and Shimera Academia Scribe. All hate them uses a tall male model. He has pale skin, gray hair that turns lighter at the ends with a few locks that have pale turquoise underlines and light turquoise eyes with orange-winged yellow pupils. He wears two large gold and green earpieces. His outfit is called the Irrational. He wears a dark half-coat-like garment with a green front and labels. The coat colors fade from dark green to black and has numerous golden details and numerous trinkets, as well as a black mini cape with a golden underside. The sleeve of this garment that he wears in his left sleeve, leaving his white arm exposed, he spots a tight black top with a splat high collar and drenches his sleeves. Also decorated with golden details and a green ornament on his chest, his arm sleeves partly cover his hands, leaving certain fingers exposed. These are held together with numerous gold patterned green fabrics around his waist, from which a number of trinkets dangle, including two light blue leaf shaped charms and three teardrop like trinkets. He wears tight dark green pants and black and gold knee high boots with a colorful top. His dendro vision is attached to his coat on his left shoulder. While wearing the irrational when Alhaitam's elemental burst is ready, the colorful tops of his boots will glow with his vision. The outfit is described as Don't bother the scribe with travesties. What do you think those soundproofers are for anyway? So obsessed an experienced staff member at the Temple of Silence. This alpha can be unlocked when you attain Alhaitam as a character. Alhaitam is a scholar who is fueled by the desire to understand the underlining principles of the world around him. He greatly values the pursuit of knowledge and dislikes 
meaningless noise and matters that distract or divert him from his chosen pursuits. To this end, while he is unambitious and enjoys leisure, he will do what he deems necessary to maintain a comfortable life. As a result, he is not fond of being a leader, refusing the position of Grand Sage, and when dressed upon the position of acting Grand Sage, expresses an intent to resign as soon as possible. All Hatem focuses greatly on himself at all times, however, he does not do so out of a disregard for others. Instead, it is a result of his rationality. For example, he believes that as it is impossible to save everyone, it is important to focus on one's own well-being first. As a result, he frequently squabbles with Kava due to their constructing ideals and personalities. Contrary to what his peers think, Al Haytham does not look down upon anyone and tends to give equal weight to everyone, be by the human or God. He also places great importance in the value of humanity and has astute insight into human nature. While he does not keep this a secret, he rarely bothers to correct others, unfavorable assumptions unless it would prove more troublesome to allow them to persist. Adaptive reasoning is his normal attack. The normal attack performs up to five rapid strikes, while the charge attack consumes a certain amount of stamina to unleash two rapid sword strikes. And the plumaging attack plunges from mid-air to strike the ground below, damaging opponents along the path and dealing AoE damage upon impact. Universality and elaboration on form is his elemental skill. Al Haytham rushes forward, dealing dangerous damage to nearby opponents when the rush ends, causing a chisel light mirror to form. Holding this skill will cause it to behave differently. Hold enters aiming mode to adjust the direction of Al Haytham's rush attack. Chisel Light Mirror, when the skill is unleashed, Al Haytham will generate one Chisel Light Mirror. If there are no mirrors at this time, he will generate one additional mirror. Chisel Light Mirrors will have the following properties. 1. When he possesses Chisel Light Mirrors, Al Haytham's normal charge and plunging attacks will be converted into danger damage. This cannot be overwritten. 2. When attacks or I mean, of the aforementioned kinds, it hits opponents, the Chisel Light Mirrors will unleash a protection attack that deals AoE dental damage. Based on the number of mirrors on the field and three, a total of three Chisel Light Mirrors can exist at once. The Chisel Light Mirrors will disappear once after the other over time and will disappear when all the hate them leaves the field. Particular field, Feathers of Phenomena, is his elemental burst. He creates a particular binding field and deals with multiple instances of AoE dendro damage. If Chisel Light mirrors exist when this ability is unleashed, all such mirrors will be consumed and increase the number of damage instances dealt two seconds after the ability is unleashed. If 0, 1, 2, 3 mirrors are consumed, all Hayton will generate 3, 2, 1, 0 new mirrors in turn. Four Causical Correction is his first Ascension Passive skill. When All Hayton's charge or plunging attacks hit opponents, they will generate one chisel mirror. This effect can be triggered once every 12 seconds. Mysteries Laid Bare is his fourth Ascension Passive skill. Each point of All Hayton's elemental mastery will increase the damage dealt by projection attacks in particular field, Feathers of Phenomena, by 0.1%. The maximum damage increase this way for both these abilities is 100%. Law of Reductive Overdetermination is his utility passive skill. When Al Haytham crafts weapon ascension materials, he has a 10% chance to receive double the product. A capable person who keeps a low profile for too long is often perceived as someone with a mysterious identity and ulterior purposes. Al Haytham himself is a powerful 
rebuttal to all these cliché views. He is a brilliant man, but he is only an ordinary employee of the academia, with a stable job and a costly house. In Shimero, leading a carefree and comfortable life. Sometimes people find it next to impossible to catch the current scribe in his office. Little do they know about the scribe, other than his name, all hates him, and that he is supposed to be present during work hours. The fact is, no one knows his whereabouts, and all they can do is leave documents and files on his desk. Alhatem couldn't be more satisfied with how things are. The man might be at home or in the library, but he'll never appear where people wish him to be. Having an entirely unpredictable schedule affords undistributed freedom. The title of a scribe may sound impressive to most academia students, but this fancy name is just a product of the academia's culture to use unnecessary high-flown titles. In truth, the scribe does not have to be present at all major meetings, nor does he participate in core decision making. The scribe is simply responsible for clarifying and archiving important documents. However, in Shimeru, where books and manuscript documents were once managed as a resource, the scribe is one of the most in the know people in the entire academia. One can say that this position is rather similar to that of a grand conserver. After all, the person who manages tax will have privileged access to profound wisdom. As the current scribe of the Shemir Academia, Alhatem acts in perfect compliance with his role. He does not attend any non-essential meetings, and when he is required to be present, he only records key points, jolting down the other minute details based on his mood. If the meeting does not affect his personal interest or fails to pique his curiosity, he will not be bothered to give any comments. He does make comments, however, when someone has come up with something offensively foolish. And one should expect these comments to be more blunt than necessary. Such in is Altaitum's life philosophy. Whenever the name, the need for his judgment arises, one must be ready to accept any means and privileges he might require to make the judgment. Fortunately for everyone, Altaitum notes that he is too lazy to possess too many ambitions. All scholars seek knowledge and the truth, some do for fame while others for ambition, and some others enjoy conquering knowledge and the truth, transcending them and savoring the sense of superiority in the process. Alhatem isn't one of them. He is only driven by what intrigues him. He believes that many scholars have already become lost in their pursuits, taking the truth as a tool or even a shortcut to self-realization. However, whenever one seeks it or not, the truth is always there, hanging high above the sky like a illuminating star. It is not the end of a trip or the destination of a match. It is and shall remain constant regardless of human existence. Also, human pursuits will not simply end after certain knowledge has been acquired, though people never doubt that they can claim the fruit with joy and are pretended to sacrifice everything for it. Their desire for knowledge will keep them going. Those who fail to see through the truth set themselves on the endless path, while those with clear minds will say the truth did not come into being to serve anyone, and whoever is unable to harness their desire for knowledge will be destroyed by it. Such is the rule of the nation of wisdom. Of course, if you want to blend in, you are welcome to fix such a poster. To the people of Shimeru, those who played a part in the operation to save Lesser Lord Kusanali are deemed to be heroes. However, a great many who make such compliments don't really know the full story. They simply repeat a fragment of a tale that they find inspiring. 
as one of the protagonists in the stories, All Hate Them has no opinion whatsoever about being a hero, nor does he believe that these stories are worth talking about. Meanwhile, All Hate Them has declined the Academia's awful to become the Grand Sage multiple times, but given the chaos in Shimeru, All Hate Them eventually agreed to serve as acting Grand Sage temporarily. It already defined common logic for someone to refuse the title of Sage and Grand Sage, and yet All Hate Them went further still, resigning and returning to his humble role as a scribe at the agreed upon time instead of clinging to power. If he did manage to gain anything from it at all, it was the financial benefits. His salary stayed the same after his recognition, not to mention the several high-quality research projects that he was able to complete on his own. There is no doubt, then, that he will lead a well-off life. In addition, his interpersonal relationships have also improved as he has more or less befriended the other participants in the Archon saving operation. They have gotten close to the point where all hate them might greet these people with a nod or two when he sees them. Sometimes, Lesselor Kusanali will also invite all hate them to the sanctuary of Shuristana to discuss various matters. He has met many people there. General Matanara Saino, the mercenary Dihaya, and Nolu, star of the Zubair Dieter. Nulu even once asked him, How did you manage to come up with such a bold plan? When I think back on it, we were all quite lucky not to get hurt. Nulu hesitated before she continued, and all Hatem understood her. Confusion for anyone who would have wondered how he could have stayed unscathed despite the influence of the Divine Knowledge capsule. But in all Hatem's eyes, he was never in danger, for he had never used any capsules. As for how he had managed to do that, it all thanks to the role as the scribe. As a scholar lucky enough to have read the Akasha Sinsta Manual, he had studied the hardest in canned knowledge, such that he knew how to alter the status of the Akasha. He had even once thought of reversing the holographic shield of the Akasha Terminal and projecting it to the back of his head to offer protection from attacks on the front. It has been proven that a plan lays the fruition for everything, and that prior research lays the foundation for a plan. Old Hatem, who had not in no interest in boasting about how he remained unscathed, answered Nulu's question with another. As far as I know, Sino and Diha are also curious about this, and yet you are the only one who has raised the question. Were they just too shy to ask me themselves? I'll hate them solemn, disgusted personalities or dispositions with others. He believes that the prevent prevalent theories about them are wrong. Suppose someone insists that one's character has nothing to do with their abilities or opinions. The person with such a view will find themselves unable to judge any aspect of another person. A smart person will often hold different attitudes towards a foolish person. Another smart person and the foolish often think differently when facing success and failure. People's views on all Hatem are proof of the point. Given his superb talents and egotistic personality, no one wants to get too close to him, but still, they see him as an outstanding scholar. This is exactly the public image Al Haytham desires. Many scholars are rigged and inflexible, but Al Haytham is not one of them. As a matter of fact, his occasional sarcasm in part reflects his philosophy. Society or the collective relies on rules to regulate individuals, and language is one of these regulative tools. Turning language against its own design serves to challenge unreasonable rules, and one can thus stay out of trouble. 
the word talented is abused with the academia, and are so born differently, touched by the archon and such. In Shimero, one's talent are a trial. Outstanding talent is not necessarily seen as a perfect gift, but it also divides people. For instance, to compliment someone with unimaginable achievements, ordinary folk often call them a genius. Or superhuman, or a prodigy. But upon reflection, one will soon notice another layer of meaning that even the speaker themselves have not realized: that the talented and the ordinary are categorically different. If someone is capable of things that others aren't, they must have been endowed with some special abilities and gifts. Extensive compliments for and wild imagination regarding outstanding people only serve to alienate them. They are successful successful because they are different. Such is the typical exercise favored by underachievers. These ignorant notions mean nothing to all hate them. Though he does know his way around people, he will not waste his time on such trivial matters. Rules define borders and set limits. Yet these rules should not be judged solely on the number of people they limit. Therefore, all hate them has come up with his own set of rules, with which he perceives everything and challenges the world. It is the crystallization of his philosophy to maintain these rules of his own fashioning. All hate them acts on his own will and deals with anything that appears harmful in his eyes. Only with objective judgment can one see the truth. By acknowledging the difference between individuals and recognizing diff differing levels of capabilities and mental capabilities, one will discover the answer right away. Judgment from others is inconsequential, but to leave the right of judgment in others' hands is equal to denying oneself. To be different. Should not simply be a label given to you by others. Rather, the talented should have learned, understand that their own uniqueness is also a gift. To put in another way, when a talented person truly understands that they are different and that they are indisputably ingenious, only then can they truly understand the value of their abilities. And as for cowards who remain blinded by perspectives. Advocate by the great majority, they have not yet found their true selves. To live a peaceful and comfortable life, one must meet a few requirements first: courageous personality and logic, a credible fighting prowess, a slow-paced job, and a costly house is in the vicinity of one's office. Al Haytham has checked all boxes above. He would never deny that no place suits him better than the nation of wisdom. Where social capital is linked to one's academic abilities, his current house, which is located near the academia, is one of the academic resources that he gained through promising research projects. This house's story dates back to Al Haytham's student years. If his classmates still remember him, they will recall that he was not one to mingle with the crowd. As a result, he has only participated in one joint research project. Despite its eventual success, the project resulted in a huge quarrel and a parting of ways. Little do people know about Al Haytham's part in the story, though they might be acquired with one of the protagonists, Keshawar architect Kava. This academic incident is not very widely known, and in truth, the tale of two geniuses falling out due to different pers perspectives is an all too familiar one in the academia. But even though their collaboration did fall through, neither of them will deny the other's party's exceptional brilliance. As for their research, the academia will later transfer the relevant assets to researchers involved, as per regulation. Although the two did not continue that research, its great success in the early stage will still serves as a compelling proof of Hankdom's academic ability. 
Later, the academia even used this project, which they had forgotten to cancel, as a reference for allocating housing resources. And as such, Al Hayton was given a very decent house, befitting his participation in this ingenious project. But the other conspirator, Kave, had never approached Al Hayton regarding the altercation. It wasn't until later that Kave had someone inform Al Hayton and the academia that he was not in one of the a house and does had no use for this property. When next day met, Kave had gone bankrupt. According to Al Hayton, this former friend of his possessed a personality and values that are not courageous with his abilities. The two differ on too many things and cannot reach a consensus even today. Allowing Kaveh to stay in his house provides Al Haytham with an interesting research topic, legally and socially speaking, since Kaveh has previously forfeited the right to his half of the house. He should pay the landlord during his stay. However, paying rent would, to some extent, deny his contribution to the research, which contracts the academic spirit. An integrity matter to consider, but Al Haytham has no interest in t the answer. Thus, he has taken his broken former colleague in, collects rent as the rightful landlord, and gives his colleague some household chores. He is well aware of the dissatisfaction Kavi might have, but it matters not to him. As far as Al Haytham is concerned, Kavi is a familiar face, similarly lacks mental attachments, and is the polar opposite of himself as a scholar. That is to say, an excellent mirror. Human vision is limited, but it can be perfected through the presence of another genius. Taking this opportunity, Al Haytham will be able to observe other aspects of this human of this world, thus understanding more things that may have otherwise been unfavorable. The Nation of Wisdom places academics and knowledge above everything else. As such, a scholar knowledgeable by others within the academia usually possesses a higher social status. Al Haytham was born to just such a family of well reserved scholars. His parents died very early in an accident, and he was raised by his grandmother, a Keshawar scholar. Al Haytham doesn't have many recollections of his parents. He learned from his grandmother that they were both employed by the academia, with his father being a mentor in Haravatat and his mother a renowned scholar in Vahumana. Al Haytham has inherited his parents' intelligence and he was always the sharp kid amongst his peers, so much that he started reading Estra's academic journals at around the age of seven. Having noticed his external talents, Al Haytham's grandmother suggested that he attend school early. However, it only took half a day in the academia for little Al Haytham to report to his back to his grandmother. Everyone he met there was bored and he preferred reading alone to listening to their meaningless courses. Al Haytham's grandmother saw his parents' talents and personalities in him and agreed to let him stay home to be self-taught. To Al Haytham, to be self-taught means to read, break down, recognize, and question. Due to his family's background, he was lucky to be exposed to books made of paper. Incidentally enough, he takes more pleasure in reading his grandmother's hard copy collections than obtaining knowledge from the Akashas directly. As opposed to the Akasha, books are inflexible and rigid, and there is no guarantee that their contents are error-free earlier. To use such a reading of knowledge is to dance with potential misinformation. The majority of people in Shemiru hate this, but Al Haytham drives great enjoyment from it. It was from reading that he acquired the ability to learn analyze and even rectify and ultimately he has learned to question if the rustic and primitive method known as reading is even in trouble. It is trouble that Al Haytham appreciates.
Althatham's grandmother told him, You and your father both like reading. Now, I can't say if the two of you have been given too much to share of wisdom or not, but always remember that being different is a gift. Knowledge is to be recognized, pursued, and trusted, but one should never forget to question it. Perhaps only those who come to such an understanding will not easily move by canned knowledge. Another's convenient knowledge media. Another and only someone who had already met these pre-quantities would have casually read the Akasha Manual sealed deep within the house of Dana. As Alhatham's grandmother had said, books contain useless information and sometimes in large accounts, but his sharp mind will shift through them, and if a book he has read lingers in his memory, it will come in handy one day. After his grandmother's passing, Alhata managed her funeral on his own, inheriting her properties and her small library before she passed away. Alhata's grandmother gave him this earliest blessing. You're a such a smart child. Many such people have a large egos and a propensity to act on their own. You are outstanding and possess a border horizon than ordinary people. This is not a bad thing, but you must take care to have a clever mind than others. You must understand that vain pursuits are but dust, and that you must discern your path with the greatest of wisdom. Later, Alhatem applied for the Academia and was immediately admitted, scoring high marks in the Haravat entrance exam. He was informed that his grandmother had also implied for him to be able to attend classes in other darshans. Following his late grandmother's advice, Alhatem has always kept a low profile and a clear mind and always makes decisions for himself. Years later, when Alhatem moved into his new house, he brought all the books over. While sorting through them, he flipped through a few that he had read long ago, the journals that had well wishes written on their title pages were from his mother's collection, and the ones with reference materials insisted between pages and notes on the margins had once belonged to his father. On top of them, there was a thick book with an exquisite and real colored cover. On the pa title page is his grandmother had written thus. May my child, I hate them, lead a peaceful life. A sturdy and durable green belt pouch. People often mistake it for a white belt. And an impression, perhaps being forced by its color, being a perfect harmony with all hate them's outfit. There are only a few things in this pouch. Keys, some recent reading of all hate them's, and a portable music player that goes with his headphones. All hate them personally made the music player when he first became a scribe, and it is connected to his headphones via cables of the same color. He sometimes uses the gadget to play music, and other times to block noise. The value of language is not limited to words. An undefined language helps to govern dots. Language is the bottom line, rules, weapons, and violence. By making our language unique, we can open up a special path to the relative completion of minds. Governing dots may appear meaningless to some, but to others it has a very significant meaning. Individuals' pursuit of uniqueness gives rise to various languages and media. People are controlled by language under many circumstances. As Alehitam flips through these pages, reaching the end of the book and its back cover, he realized that an intricate ornament had been underneath the tome this whole time. Of course, he knew what it was, a vision, the proof of one's power. However, this item did not mean much to him. A believer might have perceived this divine item to be a thing most lawfully, but to him, it was no more than a useful tool. Alhatem was out on a research trip when he was given the vision. He didn't plan to dwell too much on it. It belonged to him. After all, so what difference would it make if he checked it on it tomorrow, as opposed to today? And just like the knowledge he had acquired 
what has obtained shall always remain in his possession. Al-Haytham's name is likely derived from the Islamic Golden Age polymath. Please excuse me if I butcher his name. Hassan ibn al-Haytham, whose name is also Latinized as al -Hazen. He is best known for his work in optics and for establishing a number of code concepts of the modern scientific method, in particular arguing the importance of experimentation and the use of control groups. In Cry from the Eliezer Hospital, Alhatem is shown reading from Aristotle's Physics. The real Alhatem wrote Traders on Place, critiquing this work. His constellation, Vulture Volens, is the Latin which means flying vulture. Fact 1 Alhatem shares the same Chinese voice actor and similar appearance as Shu from Hankai Impact Third. Fact 2, Alhatem shares a birthday, February 11th, with his English voice actor, Nazi Tarsha. Fact 3, the abandoned joint study that Alhatem and Kaveh worked it on together, mentioned in Character Story 4, is elaborated upon in Kaveh's own Character Story 5. self indefinite to the title, Decorating the Ruins, I mean, Decoding the Ruins and Archaeological Philosophy of the Ruins of King Distressed Civilization. Their research was able to fill in gaps of understanding in ancient languages and revolutionize architecture in areas of Shimeru with unique terrain. The house they have now share was originally a research center provided by the academia for their studies which was converted into a proper home after it fell into disuse due to the lack of manpower and united vision for their studies. Fact 4. Kafe's character story 5 reveals that Alhatem is Kafe's junior by two years. The Chinese version makes it clear that these two years are in terms of age rather than academic progression. Based on the timeline of Kafe's stories, Kave is likely in his mind to late twenties. Alhatem very likely is currently in his early mid to late twenties, based on Kave's approximate age. Fact five: the taglines in the Chinese character introductions for Alhatem, the art of learning, digging, and doing, and Kave, knowledge of comprehension, benevolence, and ethics appear to form a dual-end couplet, but a lack in inverse tone pattern, which is required by a traditional dwellian. And that's all Hatem. I hope you enjoyed this, and next time we will talk about the Guardian who will do anything to protect her village when rules are violated. Cadence is the golden vow to those rules. So, if you're interested, see you next time.